Well, welcome back. Uh, if you haven't seen my playthrough yet, or maybe we put these videos up in a different order, I, I can't remember. This video is going to be a quick review of the game, the system, the mechanics, a little bit of the history behind it, what I liked, what I didn't like, um, and what it, what it really felt like to play. Because I think overall, these games really capture, I've never been in a siege, but from reading history and seeing these things, I think these games, the great sieges series from Worthington Publishing really capture well the essence of what those sieges are. So yeah, this game, 414 BC, Siege of Syracuse. This is a solitaire or a two-player game that focuses on the Athenian siege of the city of Syracuse during 414 BC in the Peloponnesian War. Um, the Athenians, what they were trying to do historically was control the harbor, build this counter or these walls that would in essence close off the city to any reinforcements, supply, aid of any kind, and then blockade the city from the sea so that they couldn't get any aid or assistance in that way. So this game is that about that siege. So really what it is about is about trying to build these walls. These walls have all been built. I just did the playthrough. I ended up winning. There are eight segments of these walls. You have to take orders from a menu of orders in order to decide what you want to do. One of those things is building walls. You can also rest and repair ships as they become damaged, move troops from different positions to other positions. And you might ask, well, why do you need that? Well, some of these areas, Epipoli is a good example. When these walls are finally built in the lowlands, I can then, as long as I have guys in Sica and Epipoli, I can start building the next segment of the walls in the plateau. So I need to have troops there, so I've got to move them around. If troops get lost from here and are all gone, I cannot build walls because I can't protect them. So you're going to have to move troops back and forth from time to time. You're also going to do things like move ships, repair those ships, attack the plateau, which is up here. You're going to attack different places like Aurelius, Arcadina, uh, Timonides, etc. Attack the lowlands, Olympium, uh, the different counter walls, etc. And, and you're going to choose from this menu of orders. So here is a list of all seven orders, and I'm going to show you. I'm not going to go through each and every one of these. If you want to understand how it works, go ahead and watch my playthrough. I believe I used every single one of these orders with the exception of rest and repair. I never really had any ships that were damaged. Um, those events didn't come up or were taken out of the deck. So the gist of the game is that you are choosing from these seven orders what you want to do. So you can see attack lowlands, attack the plateau, build lowland wall. I talked to you about the lowland wall. The plateau wall is the wall up here on the north side of the city. You've got move troops, moving troops from position to position. And you can move from one position, I think it's one to three units, from one position to one other position. Move ships, you can move two ships from Lysimalia out into the Great Harbor. That's one phase of this uh, journey. Then you have to take a move ships action later to move from the Great Harbor to the blockade position. And from time to time, there are events that say, oh, remove a ship back to Lysimalia or damage a ship that you might have to put down here in the damaged ship area. You can't win the game as the Athenian player unless you've done one of two things. Reduce the morale of Syracuse down to zero. You can see I got it down to four in this game uh, right here. That's hard to do, I'm gonna be honest. Or you have to build eight segments of the wall, four in the lowlands, four on the plateau, and you need to move at least one ship out to the blockade area, which requires, as I mentioned, a move to the Great Harbor and then a subsequent later move from the Great Harbor out to the blockade. You then have to survive till this deck ends. So you're going to want to do that and then you're going to want to hold on. So that's the way you win the game. You're going to lose the game if you don't accomplish those things and the deck runs out or the Athenian morale gets to zero. So this is, it's hard to win by morale. I have not won that way yet. 
But one of the things about the order, so what I'm going to show you is you'll notice attack lowlands. First off, this, this play aid is excellent. It's going to tell you how do you execute the order? What do you have to do? Where do you have to have troops? There's order restrictions. So you'll say to you'll see to attack the lowlands, I must have at least one troop in the Plumerian. So I have to have troops out here on this little peninsula. Saika or Lysimalia camp. So I have to have units here, here, or here. You can see I have units in all three of them. I think I only did one or two uh, such attacks. But it's going to tell you, what do you have to have to do? Then it's going to give you your different results. You'll notice on these columns, A, B, C, and D, those coincide with the order cards, the counter order cards that are drawn from the Solitaire deck. These solitaire cards have a title. They have a little bit of history you can see on the bottom. Very, uh, very cool. There is an event portion on the top. You have to execute these first. Uh, then there is the counter order. You can see here it says C, Defend City Harbor. So if I had chosen <clears throat> Attack Lowlands, we're going to find the Defend City Harbor column, which is C, that's the column that I'm going to roll on. You'll notice there's one through six here, and then there are different results. If I roll a one or a two, the Athenians are gonna lose one troop. One troop always equates to a morale loss. So I'm not only gonna lose a troop, and it tells you where you're gonna lose your troops from. The Athenians have to take them from Lysimalia, Saika, or the Plumerium. So Saika, Lysimalia camp or the Plumerian. I actually noticed that's spelled differently, I believe. No, it's it's the same. Just looks a little different, different type. And then the Athenians, or I'm sorry, the uh, Syracusans, if they lose, they're going to lose it from Olympium, Neapolis, or Timonidas. So Olympian, Neapolis, or Timonidas. These are different positions and they're going to take their losses from there. And I always read this, although it doesn't say directly, I read them in order that they are listed. So I have to lose it first from the Olympian, then Timonidas, and then Neapolis. Maybe that's wrong, or maybe that's too strict of a reading or understanding, uh, but I'm not sure there's any further uh, clarity. So once again, we're on that Defend City Harbor. Uh, if I roll a three or a four, I'm going to destroy, the D represents destroy, counter walls. So if they have counter walls up, and these counter walls, if they get built, that blocks me. So I'm unable to finish that unless and until I go ahead and do an attack lowlands and I get a result that is going to remove that. Then I have to do a successful build wall, build lowland wall uh, to get that there. So it's a race and you can see they need to build one two to block you you need to build two to block them from that area then it's a race to the second area two or two so that's something you're going to focus on early on in the game uh to try to get that uh try to get that down what was i doing attack lowlands or defend attack lowlands defend city harbor on a five or a six the Syracuse uh, guy is going to lose a, a unit, and it tells you where they come from. Remember, Olympian, Neapolis, or Timonidas, and they're going to destroy uh, a, a segment of their wall. So that's the way these orders work. You choose them, make sure you can do them, that you have the units or the ships or the different things in places that allow you to use them. You're then going to draw one of these counter order cards, refer to the event at the top, that's just a sequence of play, and then the column, and then you're going to roll your dice, do your losses and results, and remember, every time you lose a unit or the enemy loses a unit, their morale goes down. Morale is going to go up occasionally from events. There are more that chase the morale of the Syracuse player up uh, than the Athenian player up. That only happens very rarely. You typically have to roll really well. Um, but these orders just are really cool. So, frankly, what I have found, kind of the flow of the game, the first, say, seven, eight turns, you're going to be focused on trying to build this lowland wall. 
Then that kind of interim in between, you're going to do things like move troops and ships. You're going to try to move troops into Epipoli and Psyche if you don't have troops there. Or the Plumerian, which then gives you a bonus, a plus one modifier to any die roll to move ships. And then you're going to move, try to move ships. So the, first, the, the middle five or six turns, you're going to be trying to do that. It, you don't have to. Once you get that wall done, that's kind of what you want to do so you can start building the next wall and get yourself in position to win. Then you're going to come back to building this wall, mixing that with attacking uh, the plateau as they build counter walls and, and try to beat you to that position. You're going to do those different things. And then once you get this wall built, you're going to go back to moving your ships out there, making sure your ships get kept out there. And then you're just going to try to hang on. There's bad events that will come up. There's events that really help out the Syracuse uh, defenders. But you'll play this and you'll start to realize, oh, okay, this is what I have to do and in somewhat of an order. So that's the way the orders work. Unlike the 1565 Siege of Malta, you can do these orders over and over and over and over again. In the Siege of Malta, you had seven order cards and you would play them and you would cover this up. So that told you, oh, I've played Attack on Lowlands. I've covered that up. The only way to get those back was to play all seven orders or to use one of your scarce aggressive commander actions to get those orders back. So that became a process of managing those orders, deciding when to use those aggressive commander to get those back and do those things that you needed to do over and over again. In this game, you can build walls the whole time if you really want. You're not going to win. My guess is you'll get close to winning, but you still got to get ships out to the harbor. You got to get troops over to the plumerium to help you move those ships. And if you don't do that, you're not going to win. So you got to do some different things. And then occasionally you'll get lucky. If you watch the playthrough, I think in the first two or three cards, I had reduced... Um, the Syracuse morale down to a six or a five. And I thought to myself, oh, I'm actually going to win this uh, via morale loss. Well, I might have been able to do that. I didn't change my strategy. I kept building walls, although I still caused some losses. Some of those results on those tables forced the Syracuse player to lose units, which drops morale. But I could have maybe went off and just done attack lowlands and attack plateau and been hitting them, hitting them, hitting them, trying to knock their morale down, and I probably could have won that way. I really enjoy, though, building the walls. Once again, really gives me that thematic feel uh, of the siege. So that's the way the orders work. I've shown you the counter uh, orders and how they work. This deck is very interesting, this counter order deck. Uh, these are, you'll notice these red ones, these are phase two cards, so they get a little harder. I feel like they have worse results for the Athenians and, and give better results to the uh, Syracuse uh, defenders. But that's the phase two. These are phase one cards. As I mentioned, there's events here. You know, if there's a Syracuse troop marker and Olympium, that's down here. You're going to roll uh, and then consult this table and do what it says. You can see only on a roll of five or six is nothing happen. A one through a four, basically, I, I got to read that, but the, the Athenian morale drops one and they're going to lose a troop, which drops their morale. So there's all different kinds of events. There's redeployment of troops around the board, things that cancel your orders, which can suck. This is one of the areas that I really like about this game, though. This is a decision point. You pull this card, Command Conflict, and there's about five of these in the deck. You have a decision. Do I cancel this order or do I push my luck at a negative one die roll modifier? Because remember, you're trying to roll high and and go ahead. I also know the defense, defend plateau. And let me show you the Athenian orders. Let's look. Uh, let, let's just look at attack lowlands right here. If the defend plateau, which is this card, comes up, you can see none of those results are bad uh, for the Athenians. It's If I roll a five or a six, that's really good. So that may be an instance where I say, you know what, I'm going to take a negative one die roll modifier because I can't do any less than one loss and the destruction of a wall. 
If they chose defend lowlands and you have the same choice, you might say, oh crap, the defend lowlands table is really bad for me. I'm gonna lose a guy. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that order. So you have those kind of choices. There's about uh, five, maybe six of those kind of choices. There's also the option you have leaders. Let me show you a couple of these leader cards. And these are, are mixed in with the deck and you're gonna draw them out and they become a scarce resource for you. This one's called Menander, it's forced march. When I do the move troops order number five and it says I can retain until needed, you can see that written there, use a plus one DRM with the move order die roll. That's a good thing. So if I really need to move troops, I might say, yep, I'm gonna go ahead and play Menander, add a plus one to the die roll because I really need to move those troops. Or it gives you another decision. And remember, you can hold on to this card for whenever you need it. Cancel any redeploy troops event. And that was what I showed you uh, earlier, right here. Redeploys, Sicanus redeploys troops. These are gonna move troops from areas that don't need them into areas that are vacant. So if you've really knocked out an area, they're gonna move troops in there so they can continue to fight you, uh, to force you to have to beat them. You can cancel that. I've only done that, I think, one time. Um, typically, I have not done that. That doesn't necessarily seem uh, that important. Um, Forced March, here's another example of a leader, Nasius, Wall of Fire. I can use him when I'm building order Wall Order 3 or 4. I'm gonna roll a die, and these results are gonna come up. So you can see everything's good for the Athenian. A W is a successful wall being built. A two would be a loss, so that's not good. And a one would mean a counter wall is built by the Syracuse side. So you're gonna roll this, apply those results, then you're gonna you're gonna play your order and you're gonna do its results. So that's kind of cool. Here's another uh, kind of decision, not, not a decision, but a forced decision, fire ships. Move a ship to Lysimalia. So if you can see down here in the Great Harbor, and it gives you an order, it says from blockade first, then Great Harbor. So if this is the instance and that card comes up, I am forced to remove one from the blockade back to the Lysimalia. And that's bad because I have to get that out there to win, uh, win the game along with building the walls. So those are kind of cool. Uh, here's another leader. Demosthenes, Moonlight Assault. He's going to help you during attack order one and two. You're going to roll this die and you're going to do additional losses. You can see you really want to roll five or a six. You're going to destroy some walls and one and two Syracuse troops are going to be killed. But you also have the potential to lose. So there's a decision. You have to decide when you play that. But these cards are very important. Uh, there is one card in the deck that is a special card and it is seated. This comes in in about the last eight or nine cards. This is a, an Athenian reinforcement. So you're gonna get some more troop markers to fill up spots that may be dead or dying or, or vacant. Because the thing to remember, these order restrictions, if I have no units in Lysimalia because they've all been killed or, I, or I've moved them out, I cannot, I think I can't build the lowland walls. And I have to have them in Saika or Lysimalia. So let's assume I didn't have units here. Man, I can't do that build lowland wall thing. Now, after I've accomplished it, I don't care. I'm going to move my units to Saika and Epipoli because that's where I need them to build uh, the plateau wall. But those are kind of cool. You know, you have to make some decisions about that. I feel like those cards, those special cards, and I don't, now I've lost it. Um, the Athenian Expedition. Where did I put that? Did I turn it? There we go. Second Athenian Expedition. You're going to move some troops in. You're going to add an Athenian ship. So you get a third ship. You can see I had three on the board. And you're going to gain a morale boost. Plus three morale. So that helps. There's also one for the Spartans. Let me, uh, Spartan Expedition. So the Spartans send uh, troops to Syracuse to help with their defense. They're gonna send six troops to fill in blank areas and uh, they're gonna add plus three to the Syracuse morale. 
So I like those. Those are seated in the deck. I actually enjoy the fact that the deck is seated because you don't exactly know what's coming, but you do know somewhat uh, in, in certain areas when you get into certain territories. Oh, I'm going to... I'm going to have to start uh, dealing with that. So here in 7.1, card deck and hand size, uh, one, 1 through 3 and 4 through 8 tells you how to build that deck. So you can pause that and look at it. The other thing I really like about the deck is you can choose, the, in essence, the difficulty level of the game. You'll notice there on the top, the strong Syracuse Defender only has 24 cards in that counter order deck. So that means you only have 24 turns to win that game. That's much harder than doing it in uh, a weak Defender that has 30 cards. You have six more turns. I typically play on the good, which has 27, and it tells you how many of the cards, the different phase cards to remove. Um, so yeah, good to me is, is just an average opponent. Strong is very, very hard. I did play it once, uh, and, it, and it is a great challenge uh, to defeat. So the, the, the gist of this game, once again, it's using your orders to build your siege, your siege mechanism, building your walls, moving your ships, moving your troops to get bonuses, trying to survive, destroying counter walls. This one feels like a siege. It really does. I really enjoy it. I like the way the events work. I think they're very interesting. They keep things light. Uh, once again, everything's tied to a die roll. Very few of those die rolls are modified positively for you. I think in an entire game in that playthrough, 27 turns, what did I get? Three or four bonuses of plus one. Um, so, so really, it's pretty much a straight die roll, but it's about choosing orders, getting a favorable counter order, and then executing. Rolling the die, doing it, accomplishing it, and then if you fail, do it again. Or move to something else that has to be done. But you're kind of playing this deck, and, and the deck is set up, although it is random, Remember, look at that. This is the other thing I wanted to tell you. You're going to remove, during the good, the middle one, remove six phase one and phase two cards. So here are the cards that I didn't use in my playthrough. There are 12 cards that did not get included into the deck that could have changed the outcome had they been added in. And you can see I lost a leader, two leaders, I lost three leaders, so three of those leaders didn't come up, and that that's not great. Those leaders are very good. They help you. They give bonuses and benefits and help with your actions. Those are kind of extra cards, but the presence of those leaders in the deck means it's one less turn because when you pull a leader card and you've chosen an order, you have to pull the next uh, order counter order card to decide how it acts and what column you roll on. So when you pull a leader, you're pulling two cards for that one action. So I think getting three or four of the six or seven leaders is a good thing. Some are better than others. Some become more important than others, depending on what's going on. The, the, the other thing about this game that I want to tell you about is this is a two-player game. Alexander and I have not played it. Um... But here are some events. So during the two, and you can see the back of the two player cards look very different than the backs of the solo uh, card. But these are like events that are gonna happen. So every round you're gonna pull an event and then you mix in these key events here, the Spartan Expedition and the Second Athenian Expedition. But as the players, you're going to get your four order card, your counter order cards. So here are the four Athenian counter order cards. Defend Lowlands is always A. Defend Plateau, B. Defend Outpost. Now, that's a new term. I'm not sure I understand. That doesn't come up. Well, that's a good question. Defend Outpost. 
Okay, uh, that's a new one for me. That may be an error. I'm not. I'm not sure. And then build walls. So you're going to choose a counter order every turn when the uh, Syracuse player has gone, and vice versa. So here's a look at the Athenian order cards. These are just the seven orders, and they actually have your table listed on them. So you're going to play this face down, and you're going to choose one of your counter orders face down, and then each of you are going to reveal that. Oh, as the Athenian, I did order seven. Okay, what did you do, Syracuse? Oh, you did uh, defend lowlands or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then you're going to roll on that chart. So this also includes the counter orders and order cards for the Syracuse player. I'm very inter interested to play uh, the two-player game. I have often found while the solitaire is fun, to me the two-player game, you're never going to get a better game than when you're playing a human opponent because they can anticipate, there is bluffing, there is behind the scenes thing, things going on, you can read people. That's part of the fun of, of doing a competitive board game because you, you, you play the game, but you're also playing your opponent, like in poker. So a, a solo option where you can only play as the Athenians, or you can do a two-player option. One player is Syracuse, one is Athens. So that's very cool. Uh, there also is a very a, a neat thing that they do. They give you this little battle tablet, which I think is kind of cool. Um, and you're going to list here, oh, I played a solitaire game, and here was my result. Syracuse victory, Athenian victory, what was the final morale, uh, and then this, the walls. So you're going to kind of go against your best results. And then there's also notes for a two-player. There are spaces for two players and some notes. I just think that's kind of a neat addition. Um, you can make copies of this if you ever run it out. Because if you buy this game, you're going to play it a lot because it plays in 20 to 30 minutes. I, I think my playthrough took 40 minutes, but I did a lot of explaining, a lot of over-talking, uh, talking about some strategy. Man, if I, I'm just playing the game, I'm just playing the game, rolling the dice, pulling the cards, doing the actions, it's going to go really uh, much, much quicker. The other thing I really like about these uh, Worthington Publishing games, they really produce these well. You can see, hey, I'm, I'm there in my camera stand. This is a, a plastic injected formed tray with a lid, and it's a little hard to get off, I feel like, but that comes off, but it's going to hold all your pieces. You can see the different wall segments, the troop blocks. You're going to put your cards and dice in there and then cover it up, and it's just really nice production. Plus, I think the art's great. I don't know if that's a painting from antiquity, but I definitely think it looks great. Very, uh, very nice boxes, very thick, fully mounted uh, map boards, really nice uh, wood, you know, really nice wood pieces, linen finished thick cards. You're probably wanna, gonna wanna go ahead and sleeve these. Um, I know I will. Uh, I, I've played it five times now. I need to buy some sleeves, but they're costly. Comes with dice, just really nice pieces. The only thing I wanted to point out, and I don't know if you noticed it on the board, the Athens pieces to me look light blue, don't they? Now, the pieces that came in the board are gray. I don't know if that was just a, I don't know, a mistake or what. Doesn't make a huge deal, uh, but the Syracuse definitely are this orangey red, kind of brick red. Those match, but these gray... It's light blue. But I really like the board, very clear. I do wish they had the sequence of play on the board. One thing that I also liked in uh, 1565 Siege of Malta, some of these areas that granted bonuses to other actions, they would write that on the, uh, on the board so it reminded you. And I thought that was a nice touch. It just, it helped it uh, be played, made it easier to play. They do put, put the uh, sequence of play on the back of the play aid, and then it, it says cards are revolved, resolved in this sequence, so you're going you're gonna to have some aids there, but I'm not so sure that shouldn't have been written on the board. Um, 
And then on the back of the Athenian order card, I think it, it shows the two-player, yeah, the two-player sequence of play. So, I, I like this game. I think a lot of people have complained about these games. They think they're too random, too luck-based. And I would say, yes, there's some randomness. Yes, there is some luck. But what solo game have you ever played that doesn't require a lot of dice rolling or a random card draw? I, I just think sometimes people need to get out of their own way, enjoy the damn game, play it, have a good time, enjoy it for what it is, and don't pick it apart. I, I feel like sometimes people just... I, I need to get off my soapbox. I've played this game now five times. I'd love to set it up again and play it. Plays quick, 20 to 30 minutes. Good gracious. I can play this in between doing things. I can play this at, at night before I go to bed or I just want, I have an itch that I want to scratch to play a cool game. And you know what? There are decisions here. You get to make decisions. You get to make decisions about what you do, how you do it, when you do it. You have to make some decisions about events that come up and how your results are looking. I mean, wh what more do you want? I, If you're playing a two-player game, yeah, you can do anything you want. This is a solitaire game. They've designed this cool little solo bot to help you play it solitaire. Just enjoy it. So those are my comments. I'd give this one a real high mark. I actually like this one better than I like 1565. This one's still challenging, but it's epically more winnable. But I really like 1565 as well. I have yet to win that game as the Turks. I've come close a couple of times, but that re-energizes me. When I come close, I'm like, oh, I want to set it up and do it again. This one, you think I think you win about every other game, which is okay. Um, nothing wrong with that. This is a good investment if you like solitaire games, if you like ancient Greece, the Peloponnesian Wars... There's some good history here. I, I would point you to the, uh, you go to the back of the rule book. Uh, they have, the designer put some historical notes together. And if you don't know Dan Forney, Dan Forney has done a lot of scenario development for games like SPQR uh, and Great Battles of History. And he's written articles on that. So he's kind of an aficionado of ancient uh, ancient times, antiquity. Uh, he also gives a, a great kind of bibliography there, which lists three or four different books that he used as examples. I always like this. Thank you for doing that, Dan. It, it brings the history alive. I think that's cool. So when I read a card like this, Hermocrates redeploys troops. You know what? Uh, first thing I ask is, who the hell is Hermocrates? So I want to look that up so that I understand who these guys are because that's what I want to understand about the history. I want to live it. I want to learn it. I want to breathe it and feel it. And this game helps you do that. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already watched, I had a review. Uh, this is a review, but I had a playthrough on this. Also did an unboxing. You're going to have to just search uh, through our channel and find these. Um, but yeah, great little games. Go ahead and get them. I think you're going to enjoy them. Pick the one that you would enjoy the most. You know, Crusade, Christian Knights versus Ottoman Turks in the 1500s, Peloponnesian War in the 400 BC range. Whichever one you like, go for it. They also have a 1759 Siege of Quebec during the French and Indian War. If you like that, go for that. I know there's more of these coming. So anyway, thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid. And uh, hope you have a good time playing the game.